But let me ask you this. You know a lot of Trump supporters. Do we need to be deprogrammed? Be careful. That's why I come to work every day. <laughs> Wage growth is up. It's going past the rate of inflation. Unemployment, 3.8 percent, 26 month streak. We haven't seen that since the 1960s. You have to give some level of credit when credit is due. You have to. Like most MAGA cultists, the Fox Propaganda Network has been recently struggling both to downplay a blockbuster jobs report for March and to weaponize Dwayne The Rock Johnson's refusal to publicly endorse a candidate for 2024. Fortunately, liberal commentator Jessica Tarlov was on hand to bring the receipts and stop the spin in its tracks. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, so uh, the past 24 hours have been pretty bad for MAGA World in a variety of ways, uh, particularly concerning the recent blockbuster jobs report for March 2024. 303,000 jobs added to the United States economy under President Biden in March, bringing the total number of jobs created on Biden's watch to 15.2 million. It is a staggering number. And MAGA is bending over backwards to try to downplay what the significance of that means and whether or not it should be credited to Joe Biden. At the same time, they are trying to weaponize a recent interview from Dwayne The Rock Johnson on Fox in which he publicly refuses to endorse a candidate, specifically President Biden, because, of course, that's what Fox would ask. But we're going to play the clip because it provides the context for the ensuing interaction on the Fox propaganda show, The Five, in which Jessica Tarlov shuts the spin down. But this is the original clip between the Fox interviewer and The Rock. You made that endorsement in 2020. Are you happy with the state of America? Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made... Uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then when we talk about, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence and it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence and share with this. This is who I'm going to endorse. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. So what The Rock is saying is as a celebrity who presumably has fans all across the political spectrum, I love The Rock movies. The Rundown 2003 is one of my favorite action comedies. So what he's saying is he accrued a political price or a reputational consequence for endorsing Joe Biden in 2020 because it alienated people. So he's saying he's not going to endorse anybody this year. Again, note how he doesn't say I'm endorsing Donald Trump. He says I'm not going to make the same mistake I made in 2020 mistake in his mind, in his interpretation, which is to publicly endorse a political candidate. Now, right-wing commentators like Benny Johnson are saying, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson says he regrets endorsing Joe Biden in 2020 and will not endorse him in 2024, which is pretty misleading, as was pointed out by this community note. This clip and post omit the full context of the interview. He stated that he regrets sharing his political position because it was publicly divisive. He doesn't say he's not endorsing Biden because he regrets choosing him in 2020. He regrets endorsing any politician. However, the Vox Propaganda Network is trying to run with it, especially in the context of that blockbuster jobs report, right? This is bad news for Biden. And also note how Fox doesn't say, well, do you want to endorse Donald Trump? Presumably because they knew The Rock wasn't going to do that. But I want to play this exchange uh, in which Jessica Tarlov um, responds to all this, both The Rock's public statements and the jobs report and watch the amusing interaction which happens. This is Jessica Tarlov, truly at her best. They barely show up for, uh, for Biden, but let me ask you this. You know a lot of Trump supporters. Do we need to be deprogrammed? Be careful. That's why I come to work every day. <laughs> no, I, it is correct that conservatives are much more tolerant of liberals and spending time with them than liberals are of conservatives. That shows up especially in the dating data that a liberal would never consider going out with a conservative in the Trump era. Obviously, things have been different since 2016. Um, so James Carville and Mary Matlin are not happening round two there. <laughs> um, I think The Rock, yes, he's promoting stuff, but did get a lesson in you can alienate people when you put a perspective out there like that. He's a smart businessman. 
Uh, but we don't know how he's voting. He could very well vote for Joe Biden again. He's just not going to talk about it. And I thought that that was an interesting undercurrent, you know, that Will didn't really push him on. He didn't say, well, what does that mean? He just let him say, my endorsement led to a lot of division. And that really tears me up because he is someone who is liked by people on the left and on the right. And that's a pretty rare thing. There are very few kind of iconic people that are beloved on both sides. But you said in your lead in question to Jesse, you know, it's just bad news for Biden. The jobs report today was a monster. I wait, mean, every, wait three months. Fine when the it gets when job. it gets revised yes. down. Also, the part time jobs and there's data looking at this. That's a trend that's been happening. It obviously was accelerated through COVID with people opting into that. You still don't add 15 million jobs, and even taking away what we got back from COVID, he's adding jobs at a faster clip than Trump to go up to 303. Thousand when it was supposed to be 214. But it's going to be revised. But it, no, but it's not. And we, you don't do, do. and we don't do the story when we revise it. We only do this. That's not true. I hear it all the time. But the revision, you know what? Guys, you can talk you about the stats, but it's whether or not the people feel it. But actually, people it. are feeling it on top they are? of it. Yes, but there was a very... No, there was really interesting data that came out about people's perspective on the national economy versus their state economies. And they looked at all of the swing states and people thought the national economy was terrible. It was like at a negative 30 and individual economies in Wisconsin, in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, all the states that you need to win. Uh, to become so why president is Trump ahead in those states? He's, well, first of all, if you look at it, those polls were within the he, margin of error. I've talked but he's to you ahead. about. In right. all but the one. margin of error, it is a jump ball. That's what's going on. If this was the worst economy in the world, which is what you would say about it, there is no way that we would be even close to this. It would be a runaway for the person on the, the top of the Republican ticket. And it's not because people know wage growth is up. It's going past the rate of inflation. Unemployment, 3.8%, 26-month streak. We haven't seen that since the 1960s. You have to give some level of credit when credit is due. You have to. True. They barely. So that was a great, just an, an, a tour de force from Jessica Tarlov again, who I think has the hardest job in mainstream media. And I'm going to miss her terribly when she goes on maternity leave here in a couple of months. But listen, it's true. Um, everything she said was true. She correctly analyzed the context of the rocks comments. Right. But again, MAGA is bending over backwards to weaponize it. And we'll come back to that. Right. The how much emphasis her right wing co-hosts and just the right wing in general is putting on celebrity endorsements or lack thereof because they are very selective and very hypocritical about it. Again, we'll come back to that. But again, just in terms of the overall performance. So Janine Pirro says, you know, are we a cult who need to be deprogrammed? And Jessica Tarlov says, oh, yeah, I mean, be careful. It's why I come in every day. It's true. It is, MAGA is a cult. It has all the markers of a cult. That's not to say every Republican is a cultist. But MAGA, that core group, yes, of course, it operates as a cult. We've seen data to support it where MAGA cultists put trust Donald Trump, a pathological liar and malignant narcissist, more than family members, more than friends, more than religious leaders, more than community leaders. That's the marking of a cult. We've also seen how many of them have publicly endorsed um, him becoming a dictator for life. We've played the clips. We've shown it at Trump rallies where people have said, if violence is necessary to return Trump to power, so be it. Twice as many Republicans have publicly said, according to polls, that violence may be necessary to achieve a political end. So this predilection towards violence, this cultish devotion that he should be granted absolute presidential immunity, all the markers of a cult. So even though she joked about it, yes, of course, it's a cult. Absolutely. Unquestionably. And then her defense of Biden's record. Again, they don't want to wrestle with the fact that the jobs report has been extraordinary. And it's not an outlier. Again and again and again, one month after the next, the vast majority of them under Biden for the past three years have exceeded expectations, even with revisions, even with revisions several months later. The jobs trend is still extraordinary. And Gutfeld's downplaying it. He's assuming that this jobs report will be revised and maybe it won't be. But again, even if it is, the overall job market under Joe Biden has been extraordinary. And as Tarlov points out, as we've pointed out in previous videos, even if you are inclined not to give Joe Biden credit for the full 15.2 million jobs because those were COVID recovery, I disagree with that logic because, number one, again, Republicans would never make that concession if the shoe was on the other foot. They would say it counts. And number two, because Joe Biden did things to bring us back from the pandemic, to get the pandemic under control. So I'm inclined to give him credit for the jobs that were created with pandemic recovery. Okay. 
But even if you have this absurdly high standard, even controlling for that, average jobs created under Biden is still better than average jobs created under Trump even prior to COVID. It's just simply the case. And she says, you just got to give credit. I mean, if you're being honest, but of course they're not being honest because they're MAGA cultists. You know, we, and we have data to show this too. If, you, if something happened today, if there was a Thanos snap and Biden and Trump switched places, but the economy remained the same, those same Fox propagandists would be shouting from the rooftops how great the economy is, the jobs market, the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate for various minority co cohorts, real wage gains, et cetera, and so forth, the stock market. It's so good that Trump is trying to take credit for it from out of office, that Trump supporters, we've covered this in previous videos, like Steve Moore from the Heritage Foundation, are also trying to give Trump credit for it. But they hate Biden more than anything. So you can't take a, a word seriously that they say. So I like the fact that she called them out on it. And then, of course, Piero is like, well, it's not about the facts. It's about the feelings. Technically, that's true, right? Because people vote their feelings. But I, they, they would never say that about Trump in any respect. Think of all the terrible feelings about Donald Trump. Think of how Donald Trump has never won the popular vote. Clearly, more Americans in the past two elections that Trump's been in prefer the, the Democratic candidate to the Republican candidate. By Pirro's logic, that means Trump is unpo less popular and he is inferior, right? Because he's less liked. And she would say, no, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people feel. It's what the facts say. But see how they switch the standard no matter what? They appeal to popularity and public perception only when it benefits them. I digress. The last thing I want to point out, though, with respect to uh, celebrity and whatnot, Mediate pointed this out. Fox News spent more time covering that The Rock did not endorse Biden in 2024, but also didn't endorse Trump, than Mike Pence, Donald Trump's former vice president, explicitly not endorsing Trump. Let's think about this. So a search of Snapstream, a Snapstream TV transcript database yields just two mentions of Pence's announcement on Fox News after March 19th, on March 29th and, and April 3rd. Both of these were in passing and consumed mere seconds of airtime. Meanwhile, on Friday, Fox News released an exclusive interview with The Rock, and throughout the day, The Rock's interview became fodder for Fox and Friends First, Fox and Friends, America's Newsroom, The Five, Jesse Waters Primetime, and Hannity. And that was just on Friday. So they have spent infinitely more time in one day on a celebrity not endorsing Biden or Trump than Trump's former vice president saying he's not going to support his former boss, which is unprecedented, extraordinary. But that goes to show you the absurd standard by which they hold Democrats compared to Trump. And there's no justification for it. Mike Pence public, publicly refusing to endorse Donald Trump is infinitely more important and infinitely more damning than The Rock choosing not to endorse Biden or Trump. But they don't care. And by the way, as a reminder, think of how many times the Fox Propaganda Network and right-wing celebrities, the right-wing commentators, have been furious with celebrities. Stay out of politics. We don't care what you have to say about politics. Well, if that's the case, why are they focusing so much on what The Rock says here? It's because what they really don't want are celebrities to publicly endorse Democrats and to publicly trash Republicans. When celebrities do those things, Fox News doesn't want to hear about it and demands that celebrities not give public opinion. But when you have the occasional celebrity either endorse a Republican or trash a Democrat or do something like The Rock is doing and, and basically you know, refuse to endorse a Democrat, then they obsess over it. So I love this. This, this whole thing just exposes the Fox propaganda's grift and hypocrisy. Um, and the fact that they can't win the argument. So great performance by Jessica Tarlov as well. Let me know what you think in the comments.